I don't know which world you are in. I'd love to do a check. Are you in a world that has any urgency, any belief that we will spend 18 percent of our GDP on health care 10 years from now, or 30 percent? Don't know which world you believe in. Most of my colleagues act as if they believe it's the 30 percent world, but talk about rhetoric for the 18 percent world. Uh, if you really believe in the 18 percent world, there's a lot of urgency um, that should come out of this meeting. Another story, uh, one of the people that you know very well, uh, I trained him, whose sister began, was trained to sell Gucci purses. And she went down to a place in North Carolina to learn how to do this. And one week later, 50% of the people that went down there flunked out because what they had to do is look a woman straight in the eyes and say, this purse costs $20,000 and it's a good buy. And they couldn't smile or, you know, laugh or clown. They had to be taught to do that. And half of them flunked. I have a daughter who's a resident. And at the beginning of the year, they said, you're going to now manage the codes in the hospital. That's when people, you know, sort of heart stop beating. And so we're going to do some practice. And at the beginning, it was a joke. They didn't know what to do or how to do it because they had no practice. And remember, Bill Gates had 10,000 hours of practice, as did Kobe Bryant, before they were able to do anything. They had no practice. Four hours later, they were a little bit better. And they said, the session's over. That's all we have. No more time. And they all looked around stunned. Nobody cared. Um, what world do we live in, and what do we really want to do? One of my clinical scholars did a videotape of residents on call in the middle of the night. She, they, she asked them to just take pictures of themselves, and, and they're just talking to the camera. And they expressed the level of post-traumatic stress syndrome symptoms that would only probably be slightly exceeded by military returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. She showed this to a professor of medicine leadership group, and the response of over half of them was that those people, many of whom were women in the, field, in the video, should be removed from medicine because they clearly were wimps. Now, what world do we live in, and what do we want to do, and how can we overcome this? So I'm going to suggest a window of opportunity for those of you that want to do something different with the rest of your lives. The new health care law, if the Supreme Court doesn't turn it over, is going to give for the first time 32 million Americans insurance. Many of them will have very poor insurance plans. But they've had nothing now, absolutely nothing. Anyone that knows anything about disruptive innovation knows that you start from that point. You don't try to disrupt the person who lives in Beverly Hills and suggest that they have a grandma provide primary care. You start from that group. Is it possible that in this room there are a number of leaders that can leave their present position, form a set of institutions to actually provide a product that the community of these 32 million people will respect and revere? by adopting a whole new set of principles of how to deliver health care. The new Health Care Affordability Act has made that possible. It might be something worth considering. Can we actually change the institutions we're currently in, or do we have to leave the ones we're currently in and go where the opportunity is for disruptive change? Wonderful. It was a great day. I learned a lot from the speakers, and um, I hope that you really do turn your amazing talents into actually doing something very, very different with American health care.